Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Beach FM, great to welcome back to the radio from the Greater Wellington Regional Council. Penny Gaylor, good morning. Good morning, John. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I do hope you've been having some time off recently. Yes, it's school holiday time, so a bit of rest and relaxation. Uh, still floods of emails, I have to say, which is mm. brilliant. Uh, sort of lots of uh, topics swirling around. It's a very ever-changing um, economic and environmental situation. Yes. So uh, lots to try to keep uh, my head around. Uh, but also I have taken a little bit of time last week to do a bit of holidaying with the with the kids. You know, it's mm. it's uh, holiday season. I uh, ventured in to to Papa with the kids um, and, and amongst other things. And, Gosh, what a busy place that was with oh, all right. the Kenyan families um, spending some time. It, it, gosh, it's been a good year since I've been there, and things uh, were quite remodelled. So well, I highly recommend. We had a ball. And, excellent. Um, quite, a, quite a spread of ages, and I was also mindful that, um, gosh, how many years has the Tapapa been since it was first built? And, gosh, it still looks like it could have just been opened. You know, mm. that the... The architecture has held well, but also yep. because they've redone exhibitions and changed things quite a bit, it actually, yeah, it, it still looks very fresh and, mm. and and contemporary. That's right. It's a fun place, isn't it? And actually, I like to pop. I know that's a controversial thing, but I do like it because it is a fun place and it doesn't look like the traditional museum, uh, which is the reason that some people don't like it, I guess. But anyhow, swings and roundabouts, yeah. I think they've done a grand yeah. job. Penny, I wonder oh, if we yes. can talk a little bit of business. I see that the Greater Wellington Regional Council is going to get some more electric buses, about 98 new buses. Yeah, well, you know, it's all part of, uh, you know, we're working on it constantly and, and stuff. You know, this has been part of the long-term strategy. Um, we just will keep plugging away at it, as they say, um, pun intended. Mm. And, um, you know, this is... Uh, all part of the long, you know, the long-term strategy side of things, and you know, come our long-term strategy next year. Of course, you know, we, we're ever hopeful that that stuff will just keep um, keep track in terms of the numbers that we can um, add to in terms of the buses, complementing the electric um, uh, rail system that we have in place already. So, you know, m- moving in all the right directions, and I guess you know on the back of that side of things, but the flip side is, you know, we had Moving March uh, in the 11th year, we've yes. done it, which is our relationship as a regional council and our local councils working with schools right across the region uh, to encourage, um, you know, different, you know, ways of young people getting to school rather than being taken in the, you know, the big four-wheel drive that didn't actually really need to go across the paddock. Mm. Um and, you know, we had uh, a couple of weeks ago before schools broke up, I actually went to um, uh, Kapa Kapa Nui, uh, Primary School in Waikanae to present a young girl who had actually, um, her name had been the lucky lucky drawer to receive a $400 prize from Ooh. the regional council. Wonderful. Yes. Uh, the, the delight on her face was <laughs> just magic. In front of all the, the first whole of school assembly, uh, post COVID, you oh. see, and um, she must have, you know, been told, "Oh, y- your name will be called out for something or something." Mm. And Mum was there as well, and um, so she, she, she her name, you know, sort of is part of the the magnificent work that that school had done in terms of the the number of car rides that they'd cut out, but new ways or or more than doing the old fashioned ways of walking, biking, or even scooting to work uh, to school rather, and um, they've done an, an incredible job. Great. And then, um, as each in each district, um, to make sure we you know, everybody got a chance of it, uh, somebody's name was drawn, and she received a four hundred dollar uh, voucher for um, a bike shop. And um, so when I, well, kind of, she came up in front of all her mates, and then I said, oh, this is $400. Well, say, <laughs> you would have thought, it was, say, uh, you know, you and I going, $40,000. Yes, well, I suppose <laughs> it the was just, it is, yes. And it'll, you, you know, the, the, the gorgeous little side of her eyes just going, boom. Oh. And I said, that'll get you. 
that I might get you a new bike. And she was yeah. like, yeah, because <laughs> she has a bike, but it, it's, so I can tell she's at the age where she's growing out of it, and it, it right. maybe is, you know. Um, a hand me down. Had, had done, a, done a few miles, <laughs> done a few miles. So, you know, the, the flip side of, you know, we can do all these really amazing things with getting new electric buses, loving that. Um, working on how do we keep improving our rail train system, love that too. And then you get those cool moments where school kids are doing their bit to learn how to kind of actually do things where we lower our emissions, we think about how we can get ourselves to school and there may be the future thinking, think how we get ourselves to work and, and doing their bit and learning to do their bit as well. That's right, and the answers will come from that generation, I suspect. Uh, you have had some battery-powered buses, uh, some double-deckers running around Wellington, uh, but not all the double-deckers are electric. Some of them are diesel. Uh, was that to sort of test out the technology and make sure that you are comfortable? And I, I got your, um, your, your joke before about the plug, because they are plug-in. Mm. You're charging the batteries, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, and so you know, you take them to the kind of the, the end point of their journey. They get, get a bit of a recharge, and then they set back off. And you've got to allow that for on their schedule. So, yes, you know, gosh, you don't go off set off like any of us doing out with our household spending or anything, doing anything rash with your money. So, best thing to do is, you know. Wellington is unique <laughs> for lots of reasons. Mm. Uh, hills, hills, traffic, yes. <laughs> or a bit of wind. Um, just the city we love, and um, so you know, kind of a reasonable amount to kind of get in place to test it, test test the brilliant idea, mm -hmm. and uh, test how the efficiencies pan out, and. Um, you know, so that's while you can claim that, or claim, you know, you can kind of say, well, yep, it's, 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 it works, it, ha it happens and works in lots of other places around the world. Uh, but, you know, the, the specifics of, you know, uh, what, you know, weightings and widths and height mm -hmm. and, and the kind of batteries you need to then power that with, you know, adding to it with the capacity of people uh, to get it up and down our hills, to get it through our streets, to, um, and thinking of the network going, well, we can't just have them at that point, we've got to get them to that point yes. for when they can then recharge. And then sensibly try and make this all knit together as a perfectly synchronised Oh, we're doing our best. We're working on it. Perfectly synchronised system that all that, all those wheels and cogs work together. So, yep, you got to test it. And then, as we're kind of going right, getting the hang of us, we've got confidence to spend the next um, serious amount of money mm. to invest in these sort of things. And you know, we are asking um, that the you know, under this new PTOM, which is the government legislation that came in. A few, quite a few years ago now, uh, that you know first went through uh, the changes for rail and now through for our bus network. That that uh, change was then putting it out that we, as the regional council, don't own the buses. We have a contract with a private company mm -hmm. that we contract to provide in this network and that network, you know, whether it be Carpety Coast Network or the Poirua Network, the Wellington, Upper Hutt, Lower Hutt, you know, the respective different networks. And so it makes sense that Wellington centre, you know, that, that kind of area is where you test the stuff. You know, it'll be a, a, a longer game for us to get that here in Carpety Coast. But of course, when we made our changeover, which was two years ago now, uh, we were able to introduce uh, not electric buses, but new buses that were smaller, therefore not you know, needing to, you know, wh why, you know, why have a 40-seater bus if actually you're only getting 20 people on it? Yep. Get a 20-seater bus, and you're not wasting the energy that you're putting out and, and putting 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 in and putting out. And so those buses that we put new around the Kapi Coast uh, from user user bus. Uh, they of course far lower emissions into our in local environment. So uh, in the vicinity of 25 plus percent lower emissions. So 
certainly in the right direction, not electric buses yet. Um, you know, in terms of their lifespan, that day will hopefully come. But in the meantime, you know, they're kind of uh, factored in and being tested and successfully, you know, um, uh, in the Wellington City area. Right. So just a little part of the, the planned tranche of, of things, certainly in the the regional council, the, the mood for change and ramping it up, uh, the, the new council that has come around the table from last October, you know, all very keen to, but like everybody, like every household, we have um, economic realities to, to manage. So, um, we, you know, we have to be sensible about it as much as possible. So, uh, but, you know, in, in goal for us all. Well, get as electric as possible. That's the main thing, isn't it? Any word about and, and, the hybrid and, and, trains, speaking of electric transport or partially electric transport? It is very much uh, the the business case to refine what is it that we want and what we need and what will deliver that and how will we go find that Gosh. and what will be the formal process to do it because we're talking then, uh, then the next step that still comes within that $5 million cap is to then actually do that tender process. So, uh, okay, it sounds like a lot of work. How long is that going to take? Well, not long because we actually... You know, the, the timetable for us and understood by government is that that is an investment towards, <coughs> excuse me, um, getting trains operating on the system within five years. Oh. But it is it is a big process. Like I say, hundreds of millions of dollars. You don't just buy them off the shelf. Yeah. Um, you have to do your homework in terms of what is it that we specifically need to deliver for our particular tracks, our particular network because we want to get trains that we can then um, you know go oh there's a rugby game happening oh right. we're going to need to why don't if it's if that train is not going to be used between Autaki and Wellington uh, tonight on a Saturday night we could put on uh, use it for extra trains from the hut yep. to Wellington tonight so really sensible stuff yep. uh, making sure there is um, viable and um, kind of Reliable, well, not reliable, durable. Yes, Is that the right word I'm looking for? I, think that I, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. So that all makes a lot yeah. of sense. So, uh, yeah. so we it's can really possible, get our money's worth out of them. It's possible they could be here within four years. Then, from what you're saying, it, absolutely, absolutely. Right. And you, and you, because you go out to tender, you know, it's like when you're building a house and you kind of go right. Uh, you might have a bit of an idea of what that house looks like, and then you go, oh. Now I need to go to the architect and go, mm. give me the specifics and, you know, here's the eight. And that's when the architect dives into the, the eight millimetre pipe or the ten millimetre pipe. This is, that's actually the kind of step we're doing now. Sure. And well, then that's you encouraging. Go, oh, and then, yeah, and then, and then you'll go, oh, which builder will I get to um, build this beautiful home for me? Mm. That will be the tender process where we'll go global because there's lots of places um, that make these trains, um, and it's quite a big thing to manage that kind of process. Yeah. So you actually, you know, need a specialist team of people who will manage that carefully for you um, to make sure you get it right and you get the right company making the right train, and then they build it, then you get it here, and then you actually have to have a bit of allow also some time to be testing it and getting it running on those tracks and getting the train drivers um, practised. And, and confident for all the safety reasons mm -hmm. driving those trains. So, well, uh, I think I'd better move on to the next step in the program. And thank you very much really? for your company this morning. Lovely to talk to no. you. Thank you for the catch up. Penny Gaylor, Carpety Councillor on the Greater Wellington Regional Council. Thank you. 106.3 BGFM.